Hi guys, I'm here with another layout. This one is inspired by this Pinterest pin, which I will link in the information section for this video. And uh, I really love how this pin it features all of those squares arranged in a diagonal kind of a pattern so that they look like diamonds and it gives you a great chance to use a lot of different pattern paper in this layout. So that's why I was in love with the pin when Aaron sent it to me. So the Scraptastic Pinterest Monday blog post for November 17th is uh, what I'm doing this layout for so you can hop on over to the blog and check it out if you're looking for some other another layout that was inspired by this pin because Aaron's doing one as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm just looking through the Shake It Off kit from Scraptastic from November. I have picked those three papers that I just showed you there as potential backgrounds. I really don't think I'm going to get to use that feathery one for a background for this layout, but I kept it out just in case. And then I picked out these five pattern papers, some of which I like both sides and some of which I only like one side for this particular layout. Um, and then that other piece of paper, that orangey colored paper, is actually just a scrap that I'm using just to hold the shape of a 12 by 12 background paper so that I can decide on the size of my squares. So I'm starting off by trying out 2 by 2 and I'm pretty sure that 2 by 2 is what I'm going to want. This is why I cut a whole strip of them. I was going to cut more and then I thought no I better wait and see if this 2 by 2 is going to work for me. Basically I'm looking for a size of square that's going to allow me to uh, see enough of the patterns that I can appreciate and, and enjoy the patterns in these papers. Um, but I also want it to be small enough that you can see the design. Basically the design is going to be diagonal lines of three squares so that they're arranged on the diagonal so that they look like a, a, a design of, of diamonds. So I did like the 2 by 2 inch square size, so I'm going to go ahead and cut all of my papers into 2 by 2 squares. So I'm just taking a strip and a 2 inch strip and then cutting it into 6 little 2 by 2 squares. And uh, I'm just I'm going to be using the backgrounds, the back sides of some of these papers and for some of them I'm just going to use the front sides. It depends on the color scheme on the back and whether I like the pattern enough. So I'm definitely cutting way more squares here than I'm going to need, but I'd bet I'd rather cut too many and not have to pull out my trimmer again and trim off more. So this paper with the hearts on it is gossamer blue on my desk. Then these two are crepe paper open book. Then another gossamer blue on my desk. And then this last one is We Are Memory Keepers from the Shine Collection. So I'm going to start with my with my uh, scrap piece of 12 by 12 paper and I just pulled up the Pinterest pin again and I'm actually uh, arranging this design, I'm rotating it 90 degrees so that it is going to go sideways instead of up and down and the reason being is that I knew I wanted to do some journaling and I was pretty sure that I would want to put strips or lines of journaling in a, in a vertical line and so I thought that it would provide some balance to this if this were a horizontal line and then I had my journaling go vertically. So I'm just going to shift everything over a little bit so that uh, I'm not ending on such an awkward spot over there on the left. I didn't want little teensy weensy bits of, of paper showing and then larger chunks on, on the right hand side. So I'm going to continue to shift things over to the right until the left and the right both have sort of even amounts of sizes of paper that's falling off the edge. And I'm also trying to balance out the patterns and the colors. Right here, I, uh, my hesitation there was that I didn't necessarily want to put two of those mustard colors together. So the stars are kind of like a golden mustard color. And then that chevron is also. Um, but I decided to just go ahead with it because, I don't know, I didn't mind it. So now I'm thinking about using this feather paper and yeah, you know, I just really wanted to use it. <laughs> this pattern is not going to be 
flattering for that paper at all. It's not going to be a good way to showcase that paper. So, I, you know, I thought about it just in case because sometimes you think something isn't going to look good and then you try it out and it, looks, it surprises you and looks good after all. But once I had all those squares, even without arranging them, once they were just laying on the feather paper, I realized that that was definitely not going to work. So I didn't bother continuing with that idea. So instead I took this Heidi Swap paper and it came in the kit and what I really like about it is two things. It provides a nice neutral background because it's white and so it allows the patterns in the in the squares to just really be the be the the main thing that you see on this layout. Uh, and the other thing is that because it has a bunch of lines and triangles on it, it gives me a good way to line up my pattern so that it doesn't float off the page, which is sort of what it's doing here. See how it's it's going, for, when you look at it from left to right, it's floating off to the right. It's, go, it's going up. And this kind of a pattern is going to do that unless if you're super super careful about cutting all of your squares exactly straight and starting off on exactly the right angle and keeping that exact perfect angle all the way through and we all know that I'm not about exact anything so <laughs> that's just not going to happen for me so having a background paper that has those lines on it is really helpful for me so here I have this uh, photo and then I reprinted the photo and what I did was I cropped it on an angle. So I took a square and then I rotated the square so that it, it cropped the it cropped the photo at that spot. Basically, I wanted his head in the corner of the photo instead of his head in the middle of the photo. And uh, that allows his body to be upright and vertical on this page. And it doesn't look quite as awkward as seeing his, his body at a funny angle. Um, yeah, so that's that's why I did that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lining up all of these squares so that the points, on like the bottom most point and the top most points, are lining up with the lines on the background paper so that each point is going to end at the on the same line. And that keeps everything all straight and even and not floating off anywhere. And I'm doing the same with this lower level of, of squares. And then I'm going back and filling in the center square uh, after the other two are adhered. So I can line up my center square based on the two squares above and below it. And I'm just leaving a little bit of space between my squares so that I can have a very thin border of the background paper just showing through. Again, I'm just going back and placing that paper. And I'm really loving these patterns in this kit. And I really love that my first layout gets to use so many different patterns on one layout. I just love that. And um, you might think that this is a tiny little photo for a 12 by 12 layout, and it is. And, and I sometimes will use small, small photos on a 12 by 12 layout, but this one is especially small. It's cut at 1.7 by 1.7 inches, so it's very, very small. It's even smaller than the photos that I usually use for my pocket pages. Uh, part of the reason that I did that was a, I thought it would look nice if it fit, if the photo fit right into one of the squares as opposed to having to span multiple squares. It helps me to uh, keep the overall uh, design intact, uh, but also it's a very low quality photo. So his friend took it and, and he sent it to him and then he sent it to me. And somewhere along the way it was either taken in a bad um, like quality or it lost its quality through being forwarded so many times and it's quite low quality and so it looks it looks its best when it is small and so in order to keep him crisp and so that you could see what the picture was and not be distracted by the graininess of it I kept it in a fairly small size. So this fearless word, I'm going to go down this path a little bit before I abandon it, but this fearless wood, wood veneer is uh, beautiful and he is rather fearless, so I thought that it would be a, an appropriate word to put on the layout. I'm not going to call the layout fearless and I, I'm a little hesitant to use such a large word. I don't want to compete with the title. I always have this problem with using words on layouts when they're not the title because I don't 
like my words to compete with the title. But anyways, um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm spraying it with Mr. Huey's in, um, which color is that? I will check. It's sea foam. It's sea foam. And uh, so it, then I just sprayed a teensy weensy bit of white over top of it just to give it a slightly mottled and interesting look. And so I really love that and I think it looks great with this layout but I just can't figure out how to get it on the page. And I also, I don't want to talk about Fearless even though he is. Um, I want to, I want, my journaling is not going to go quite in that direction a little bit it wouldn't be irrelevant for me to put the word fearless on there um, but I'm gonna decide not to so first I'm gonna sit down and do a whole crap load of sewing and here we go so I'm going to sew along every single line on this layout and so Yes, this might be rather boring, but this is it. This is the process. And I've, you know, I've sort of committed to showing the process and not cutting things out, including my mistakes or boring parts. And so, so this is what it's like sitting at my sewing machine for 10 minutes <laughs> doing sewing. Um, a couple of tips for sewing on layouts, if you haven't done it before, if you haven't done much of it, it will uh, gum up your machine if you sew through glue. So as I was putting those squares on my layouts, I tried to keep the adhesive in the middle part so that I'm not sewing over adhesive at any point. Uh, sometimes I do sew over adhesive and then I just make sure that I give my needle a little rub so that it, so that the so that the adhesive kind of rubs right off of the needle instead of getting giving the adhesive an opportunity to get gummed up inside of my machine. Another tip is that uh, you'll want to change your needle very frequently when you're sewing on paper because it will become quite dull and you do not want to use the same needle for sewing fabric that you use for sewing paper because it will be dull and it'll make the holes in your fabric bigger than they need to be. Uh, I don't backstitch. Instead, I go back and add some um, some tape to the back of it just because I don't like the look of backstitching. And I'm not very good at backstitching, so I never actually go back on itself. It ends up looking more zigzaggy than anything else. I am running this stitch a little bit off of the line so that it extends up and down a little bit past where the paper, where the pattern paper is. Uh, and the other thing is that I'm using blue thread in my spool. My bobbin is still white. I rarely change my bobbin. I have black bobbins and I have white bobbins. And uh, I'll change to black when I'm using black thread just because I don't want those little bits of white thread to show up if my tension isn't perfect and vice versa with black and white. Um, but if I'm using any colored thread, if it's a dark colored thread, I'll use a black bobbin. And if it's a light colored thread, I'll use a white bobbin. I hate filling bobbins, so I buy them already spooled. So I just cut all of the little stringy threads off of the back. And now I'm just taking this Disney themed washi tape, which I have more of than I will ever be able to go to Disney. I mean, you know, I'd have to live in Disney to, <laughs> to do enough Disney themed layouts to use up the amount of Disney themed washi that I have. Just because uh, I got a Queen and Company uh, big pack of washi tape that was themed for Disney back when I went to Disney a couple years ago. So. So I just use this chevron. I do like the washi tape. It's just I know I'll never use it all on layouts, so it's a good one to use on the backs of layouts. So now I'm just cutting the threads on the front and putting it all in the garbage so my cats don't get at it when they come in here. And now these letter stickers are called maple and they are awesome. I have them in black. I have several packages of these in black. They're one of my favorite letter stickers because they're so skinny you can fit a fairly long title into a small area and that is what I absolutely love the most about these letter stickers. You can 
spell till your heart's content and still have space. <laughs> so I'm just spelling out boy meets world on this piece of wax paper. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut each title, each word apart. Sometimes I know what my design is going to look like when I put it on the wax paper and so I put it like that on the wax paper and other times I don't know what it's going to look like. So I wanted to play around with this and here I go with the fearless and see how fearless is way more bold than boys meets world and even once I color those th those thickers fearless is too bold so I'm not going to put that on there it competes too much so I'm just having a look at my Copic markers because I know from experience that this thicker uh, that mist will not stick to this thicker because I've gotten mist on it accidentally before and it just wipes off and that's a good thing when you when you got it on accidentally but it's not a good thing when you're trying to change the color of your thickers so I decided to use my Copic markers because I haven't used them in a while. So here they are. And the colors that I pulled out are BG 13 and 15 and Y 15 and 19. I don't have a huge selection, um, but I've got a decent selection. You saw them there. I think I've got 70 or something, which I collected over a period of three years. I started with 12 and then I quickly bought more till I had about 30 and then I bought the rest very slowly and then very recently I got a big load of them. Like I got, I think, 20 or 20 or 30 all at once. Maybe 20. So I'm just using the lighter color here, the BG13, to color in the word boy. And I'm just kind of swiping it over. I'm trying to be careful to not ruin the tip of my pen. They can be replaced, but I don't want to bother with that. So I'm just being very careful. I'm, I'm using a very light hand. And now I'm just going over it. I was thinking about maybe making the bottom darker than the top, but there's not too much of a difference between 13 and 15, so it, it wasn't showing up. So what I decided to do instead was I used the darker color just to run over it. And basically, the I don't know if you're familiar with the texture of these. If you have them, you will be. But they've got like little picks in them. It's a puffy sticker, but it's not entirely flat. Like it's got little bits that are raised more than the other bits, but they're just microscopic, like they're tiny, tiny, tiny. And so when you wipe a, a darker marker over it, it picks it up and it just it, it just emphasizes the fact that there's just a slight amount of texture to these letter stickers. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going back and with the darker marker, it just picks up where the texture is on those stickers. And the texture is super, super subtle. Like it's not anything that you're probably going to see in this video or even in the photos, uh, but I see it, so that's why I did it. So uh, my letter stickers are done. They're all colored in. These two beautiful colors that are also in the pattern papers that I had already picked out. And now I'm just going to do my journaling. I did my journaling earlier in the day when I was at soccer practice. <laughs> And so I knew that I wanted to scrapbook this picture, and so I just did the journaling while I was there. And I'm going to be uh, doing my lines, and I've been kind of, this has been a theme for me lately, I've been lining my journaling. I used to never line my journaling, and I've also been doing a staggered, um, kind of like a right justified with a staggered line on the left side. Um, I don't know, I just like that. I don't know why. It's my thing lately. I'll probably, you know, stop doing it eventually and it'll be replaced by some other thing. So I'll read the journaling to you. It says, um, he has already traveled the world quite a bit, but to leave his parents, friends, and family and live in a new and different country must be quite an experience. I'm so inspired by how he has risen to the occasion and really immersed himself in the Canadian teenage experience. And so, except I, I actually left out the word himself and I had to go back and add it in. So you're not going to see me write the word himself and it's going to look like I made a big mistake. I kind of did. Um, but I went back. So when you see the photos, you'll see the word himself will be in there. It does throw off the design of the of the journaling a little bit, but I'd always sacrifice design for the story if I have to. So I just added the word instead of leaving it out. 
And uh, for those little triangles, what I wanted to do was I wanted my journaling to fall on those triangles because I, I think that it just kind of gives a, just the perfect little bit of emphasis to to the journaling and they were already printed on the paper so it was awesome and it also makes it not seem so random like why are these triangles there because um, the the rest of the layout kind of goes in a different direction than that so it kind of gives some structure and and um, purpose to my journaling being over to the side. So I got some ink on the paper there. That's what I was using my eraser for. It must have been on my fingers or something. I'm always paranoid about getting ink from my fingers onto my layout, but I still managed to do it even though I'm like a crazy person with baby wipes. But anyways, so now I'm just lining these up so that they're going to, um, you know, fit in the lines where the, in those diagonal lines of the, of the squares of paper. And Boy Meets World is sort of, you know, of course it comes from the TV show that uh, I used to watch when I was a young adult. And um, I think it was on in reruns when I was a young adult. I, it wasn't new when I was a young adult. But anyways, that's when I watched it. Um, I was older than him when I watched it. But it, it kind of reminds me of, you know, this idea of, the, first of all, the photo is like him he's he's actually on a guardrail but he's way up over a valley and so it looks like he's you know like taking on the world type of thing and uh, you know as the journaling says oh what I did there was I actually went back to my computer and reprinted that photo in a slightly smaller size it was originally 1.8 by 1.8 and I printed it up at 1.7 by 1.7 because that allowed me to fit it right in so that you could still see the stitching around it so now I'm going to come up with my clusters of embellishments. Um, and yeah, so so the, the title is kind of like, you know, he's taking on the world or, you know, he's 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 going out into the world. He's awfully young to be doing that. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's really, it, I've been really inspired by him because he's, uh, this is Marcel, he's our, our, our international student who's staying with us for these 10 months. I just pulled some puffy stickers out of my stash, including those ones from Lawn Fawn and then these October afternoon ones because I don't have quite the right shapes in the in the puffy stickers that came in the kit so I am going to go into my stash and I'm actually going to take these little chevron pieces from the Amy Tangerine ones from quite a while ago. And I'm going to put those on and then the rest of the puffy stickers on this layout will come from the kit from the Gossamer Blue set that is remaining there. So what I'm doing as I place these embellishments is um, I've got the black, right? So the little black puffy sticker and the black on the flare badge. So I need more black. But I also want to layer something underneath of this flare badge. But that map, even though that label has a map, so it's sort of appropriate, um, it's not fitting with the overall look. It's it's making that flare badge look too weighted down, and I want it to sit on something airy, like lighter. So I'm gonna go to these Maggie Home stickers and try to find something a little bit better than the map sticker, which was from the Maggie Home stickers. So this this little uh, banner. It's an orange and it's a little bit bigger than, than the space but it, it looks okay hanging over like that. And then I'm going to put these um, these stars right beside it. I'm going to shift them around a little bit in a few minutes. but uh, And then I just attach the flare with a, with a little pop dot and that's one cluster of embellishments. And now I want something that's going to tell you start reading here. So that's what this red puffy sticker is that points to the B in boy. I often like to mark the, the beginning of my title. And then I just have this little one down here. Um, it's another little puffy sticker right above the word quite. And that just kind of attaches the first journaling to the second journaling. So I've got, I've got a uh, cluster up by the B in the word boy saying this is where it all starts. Then I've got another cluster that sort of points at the photo and then I have two more clusters that connect that are at the two different places of journaling. So one at the top part of the journaling and one at the bottom part of the journaling.
So that's why I placed the embellishment clusters where I did. They just I just wanted to kind of guide your eye around the layout. And I just thought that that little plus there, that little black plus, just I wanted to have a little touch of black on each of those clusters and two on the larger cluster. So now here are the close-ups and there are some photos after this and you'll get to see that I did add the word himself but it doesn't it kind of takes a little bit away from the design but at least the word is there um, yeah so basically the, the whole idea behind this layout is that you know he certainly has already traveled to a lot of what we would consider exotic places as Canadians who have never traveled abroad um, but coming here to Canada and spending a year here away from his family we think is a really um, brave thing for anybody to do and we really respect and look up to him for for doing this for taking this on at such a young age um, and he's really you taught us a lot about about life <laughs> and um, and yeah we we hope to be able to teach him a little something about <laughs> about what it's like to live in Canada and, and different different cultures and different ways of you know viewing the world so that's it Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, check out the blog because Aaron has a layout that has been inspired by this pen as well. There's a little close-up of the journaling. I did use a Desairs pen. It's just the house brand of the, the local big, ba big box art store. It's not really big box, but it's kind of a chain of, of art stores here in Canada. So thanks for so much for watching, everybody, and I hope you have a really great scrappy week. Mm -hmm.